Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palneper Manikam. In this video, we're going to talk about the Omicron surge and the start of the third wave in India. So I'm going to tell you what we can do to prevent whatever has been happening here in the United States so that we can come out of with a very good outcome with this Omicron third wave in India. So I can tell you that whatever has happened here in the United States happens a month or two later in India. And that has exactly been the case for the last two years since the start of this pandemic. Let's dive deep into it. So let's talk briefly on this new variant IHU, which was identified in France. WHO has labeled it as variant of concern. They are closely looking into it. And it was identified as early as in November, exactly the same time where Omicron was found in South Africa. Because France is so romantic, even virus is found in couples. So it's called B1640. It has 46 mutations and 37 deletions. And it's almost similar to like a bus number these days compared to Omicron with 36 mutations. So it sounds very, very harmful compared to Omicron. But the effect has not been as bad as Omicron even in the last like two months. So this new IHU variant has been identified in 12 people in Southern Alps. Looks like this was identified in a patient from Cameroon. So uh, it has not outcompeted Omicron yet. This is almost like Talabadi and Guna movie releasing at the same time. And Talabadi was a super hit, which is Omicron and Guna is IHU. I'm hoping that it doesn't become a late hit like Guna. So it looks like we don't have to worry too much about the IHU variant at this time. Looks like vaccines might cover as well. I will keep you posted if you get more information. But now let's focus on our Omicron and the third wave in India. I think people have started becoming very complacent about Omicron thinking that it is very, very less severe. Uh, so it doesn't do anything at all. So I think people are missing the bigger picture that it is more infectious than Delta variant. For example, if Delta one person can infect three people this omicron variant can infect up to 10 people which increases the infectivity rate significantly even though the severity can be less but the problem is this might impact our health system more than the delta variant hear me out let me explain so let's say delta infected 100 people and 10% of that 100 people were hospitalized, which is 10 people. 10 people requiring hospital beds for further care. Uh, compared to Omicron variant infecting 1,000 people, and then 1% 1 of 1,000 people are getting hospitalized, which is still 10 in number. So either ways, it is almost equal. And we are seeing some mortality rates in Omicron as well. So the main point to remember is that if this keeps on going from 1000 to 10,000 to 20,000, the hospital system will be compromised and people who will actually need some hospital support might be in danger and that is why we need to prevent that situation right now and that is why indian government and especially tamil nadu government has imposed like lockdown and curfews over the weekends and also overnight because for the pongal it's not going to be rrr release it's going to be omicron pongal but there is a bigger problem that i want to convey from whatever experience i have here in the united states for example, here in my hospital, Omicron variant is dancing and actually we are dancing to its tunes that all the ICU beds and the hospital beds are completely occupied by the dominant Omicron strain. I guarantee that there is no significant death rate, but still these patients require hospital support with some kind of oxygen support, antibiotics or even supportive care because patients are really sick. So to further emphasize the point, all the medical staff, including doctors and nurses, are getting sick with Omicron and they are being home quarantined or they are also hospitalized sometimes to a point that we are completely understaffed. They have completely closed down the outpatient elective procedures because they don't have any other medical staff to support the uh, patient care at this time. So I am anticipating this might happen in India a month from now or maybe two to three weeks from now given the significant increase in Omicron cases now. An even bigger problem is the lack of availability of booster doses. Indian government has announced 
the booster doses to be starting only from January 10th and I just can't believe I cannot even imagine a reason why they are starting it so late because we have been giving booster doses throughout the world and we have real time data in UK where AstraZeneca which is the COVID shield uh, it has been proven that the immunity weans off after six months after the second dose and all the people over there are getting booster doses and we are just starting now with January 10th as a starting uh, date for the booster vaccination and that too only for 60 plus and also patients with medical comorbidities. Palli will in the tea kudiklama venaman yosichitrika sendile booster orane ponu abrinted vegama deshinitriba. If it was me, I would not focus on the effort of lockdowns and curfews. I would focus that effort in increasing the productivity of the vaccines and increasing the reach to get the booster doses to all populations and not only to the 60 plus and also with high risk patients. My friends, I don't know, Kumar was saying, day after seeing your video, I got the first dose of COVID shield. I was like, hey, we are talking about booster doses. You are just getting the first dose of COVID shield. Huh? Gandhi Sittitara and the range. I'm really concerned about the unvaccinated people because Omicron variant can cause severe disease in this patient population. If you're still holding the board of unvaccination, Please ignore that. Please put that board into the trash. Tani mani the uri meyathuki kuppai la poranga because this is not individual decision anymore because your decision is affecting other people's as well because you are the reason for creating these number of variants here in the world. I think Omicron is playing squid game with us by eliminating all the weaker patients, especially when they're unvaccinated and targeting the vaccinated patients next. And I'm going to be very honest with you, everybody is going to get COVID. It is just a matter of time. It is not whether you will get COVID. It is just when you're going to get COVID. You can check in your WhatsApp groups as well. See how many people have gotten COVID already. That number will increase. So it is a matter of time. We are going to focus on what you should do if you get COVID in this current context. So if you are positive for COVID, you need to quarantine yourself for five to seven days, especially if you only have mild symptoms and you should monitor these two things. One is your respiratory rate and number two is your pulse ox, like oxygen levels. So to measure the oxygen levels, you have the pulse oximeter and it will give you a number. If it is more than 94, you are good. To measure the respiratory rate, you place a hand on your abdomen and you uh, count how many times it goes up and down, up and down in 60 seconds. That will be your respiratory rate per minute. Usually it averages between 18 to 24. If it is more than 24, then there is a concern that it might be involving your lungs as well. Many of my friends are counting the respiratory rate wrong because they are counting it after a full course meal in an Indian buffet and the respiratory rate is zero because they're completely asleep. So given that Omicron variant doesn't affect the lungs significantly, so 90% of the time, all the respiratory rate and the oxygen levels will be normal. But in those few percentage of patients where when the saturation level goes down to less than 94 or the respiratory rate goes more than 24, that is the time to seek medical attention. And I repeat this again, this is not like Delta that you need to get admitted to the hospital right away when you're being COVID positive. It is absolutely important important to preserve the hospital resources and to be used only if it is absolutely needed because we're going to need the resources for quite a while in the next one to two months. My friend Saranna Kumar is asking if I get admitted in hospital bed will there be massage services available? I said intense massage services CPR. I want to specify on two other treatment options that have been misused significantly, especially during the last wave. I want to make sure that people understand we don't have to use that on every patient. So I'm talking about the two oral tablets that is available in India as of now. The number one is Favipravir and the number two is Monulopravir. I'm not sure how Favipravir got this much amount of attention in India because there is no significant research studies explaining that it is beneficial or it decreases the mortality. Uh, there is a slight subset of population where that can be given in mild to moderate COVID positive patients who are at high risk of progression. But even then in that population, Favipravir has not been shown to decrease mortality or improve symptoms. So it is essentially a waste of 
time. So the second tablet available is called Monolipravir. This is a given in 200 milligram doses. You take four tablets two times a day. So eight tablets a day for five days. And you need to take this within five days of symptom onset. And again, this tablet is not for everybody. This tablet is only for patients who are at high risk. For example, 60 plus diabetes, obesity, Pregnant patients, cancer patients, immunocompromised patients, all these patients when they get fever or sore throat or cough on day one, you get tested for COVID on day two and if you're positive on day three, please take this medication on day four or even on day three. It has to be taken within five days of symptom onset. If this is taken like on the sixth day or the seventh day of symptom onset and not when the test is positive, this will not work. This is a 2,500 rupees tablet. So I want you to spend your 2,500 rupees very, very carefully and it is not used for all patients. I'm anticipating that how Remdesivir was sold in black market at the time of April or May 2021. This Molnupiravir tablet might also be sold. So please be careful because this also has some harmful side effects as well, which we don't know uh, on long term because it interferes with the DNA of other cells as well. So if mild to moderate, if you're healthy, if you're COVID positive, you do not need this tablet. I just wanted to emphasize the point again. If you are 35 years old and if you're COVID positive, you don't need this tablet. But at the same time, if you're 75 years old and if you're COVID positive, you need to take this tablet within five days so that it prevents the hospitalization or mortality by 30%. And more importantly, please don't test yourself for COVID again within a span of two weeks because you are going to be COVID positive most of the times. So if you're not having any symptoms, if you are fever free, if your fever goes away for three consecutive days, you are not considered to be infectious anymore. So please do not test yourself again. We could use that retesting method for newer patients so that we can quarantine them accordingly. So with the current increase in cases, the peak of the case volume is supposed to reach by end of January or even before that. And the peak hospital admissions is supposed to be happening in the mid-February, somewhere around the Valentine's Day. And it is affecting young uh, men and women as well. So if you are single, Valentine's Day is coming and Omicron wants to celebrate the Valentine's Day with you. We want to prevent it. So please stay home. And this is true, especially for 60 plus patients, obesity, pregnant patients and men who are looking like pregnant. All these patients are at increased risk of progression from mild to moderate COVID to severe COVID disease. So you guys have to stay home, follow the same precaution that you have been doing this for the last two years. And I know you are fed up of it, but we don't have an option at this time until you get the booster dose and until all these crazy things subsides in the next one to two months. So based on the news I'm reading and also based on the activities, I do not think Indian government is taking this very seriously. I can believe that there was an election rally in Uttar Pradesh for Indian National Congress where all these young girls were in a stampede almost like one after another where this Omicron is having a party without any mask or without any protection. And they ended up in a stampede. I can't even believe that this is happening. So I beg Modi ji for three things. Number one, please stop all the election rallies, all the closed crowded events for the next two months. This is not going to help. Number two, please increase the vaccine availability. Please give booster doses as much as possible, as soon as possible to people, regardless of their medical condition. Please open up. There is no reason to wait. And number three, this is a big one. Here in the United States, we have been requesting and also pushing for insurance people to increase the premium and, and requesting them not to cover hospitalization for an unvaccinated patient because they have to pay for their decisions, right? They are the main reason for these kind of new variants to pop up. And I would recommend the same thing to happen to Indian government as well that Indian government can cut down all the government benefits to people who are unvaccinated. I'm really hoping that Modi ji does these three things so that we can cut down significantly on the peak 
uh, it is going to happen but at least we can cut down on the severity i want to ask you guys do you know any of your relative or friend or any family member who has not been vaccinated yet has not even gotten a single dose if so why and please also tell me whether you'll be able to convince them to get vaccinated to prevent severe disaster or a death in another family i'll see you in the next video bye